Hey there, my name is Blaine Chastain and welcome to my foundational tin whistle course. First thing I wanted to talk to you about is grip, posture, and tone of the tin whistle. Now the grip is pretty simple. Uh, as you can see, I'm holding it like this with my left hand on top, my right hand on bottom. That's how most people hold the tin whistle. Uh, even lefties will tend to hold it this way as well. Uh, now if you are a lefty and it's, it's, it's easier for you to, to hold it the other way, fine, but um, if you're just starting out, I would recommend left hand on top, right hand on bottom. Uh, let me run through the range of, uh, of the whistle here and you can kind of watch uh, how I'm, I'm holding it uh, and then I'll maybe comment on a few things after that. Okay, so as I moved up the whistle, you may have noticed that my right hand pinky is doing the work of sort of stabilizing the whistle. Of course, also my thumbs underneath, you can see that, my thumbs underneath are supporting the weight, uh, in addition to the, the whistle, of course, just resting uh, on my lips here. So as we walk up, my right hand pinky is doing the work of stabilizing. Now some folks um, will use another finger uh, resting on one of the finger holes um, to stabilize the whistle and they find that easier or more intuitive. Um, for me, I, I taught myself this way, so of course uh, it's the most intuitive for me. I also have found that on some whistles that method doesn't work. Uh, it'll affect the tone of the other notes above. So on this whistle, say for example, even still it affects the tone. And so, I would just recommend that you um, stabilize with the, the, the right hand pinky, uh, and then, oh, also uh, your fingertips. Uh, some people ask me if I use my fingertips or the flats of my fingers. As you can see, obviously, here in the video, I'm using the flats of my fingers. Um, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you start playing the whistle and start playing lower whistle keys, that the whistles are, are longer, they call them low whistles, uh, you have to use what's called a piper's grip, which I'll cover in later lessons. Um, and Piper's grip requires a f sort of a flat fingered approach uh, to be able to reach the holes of a, of a low whistle. So I've gotten used to playing even the high whistles with a more flat fingered approach. Now I, I know there's some great whistle players that play with fingertips like this. Uh, Mary Bergen is one who comes to mind who plays uh, with sort of arched fingers and with her fingertips. Uh, not the very, very tips, but you know, sort of arched a bit. Um, whatever is comfortable for you right now, I'd say go, uh, go for whatever feels comfortable. Uh, hopefully you'll, you'll be with the tin whistle for a long time and over that time you'll, you'll sort of adapt uh, your playing style and your technique to, to what fits you best. So I think that's it in terms of holding the whistle. Uh, now the next thing was, okay, so grip, posture. Now posture, um, it's not as important as it is when playing the Irish flute, which obviously you know I, I also teach. Um, the flute requires just a, a, you to be really efficient with your breathing uh, getting as much air as possible uh, so that you can play uh, the length of phrases that you want. Now with the whistle, whistles don't take generally as much air. So, now some whistles do take more air than others, but generally whistle doesn't take as much air as playing the flute. So you can get away with a, a little bit less proper posture. But if you're, you're having trouble getting enough air, uh, you, just the idea is you want to kind of be sitting up straight, kind of on your sit bones, or if you're standing, just standing. And when you're breathing, you want to take you, you want to breathe so that you're filling your belly with air, not your chest. Uh, if you've sung before, if you sing, um, if you've been on choirs, that sort of thing, uh, they always talk about breathing from your belly because that's where you, get, you can get the most amount of air. Um, so that's the idea, breathe from your belly. Um, and you know, posture uh, is somewhat important, but you know, oftentimes I'll find myself just kind of slouched on, the, on a chair or whatever, uh, playing the whistle uh, to really no ill effect. So uh, whatever works, um, but if you are having trouble getting air, uh, then you know just think about your posture a bit and your breathing. Um, so and then finally tone, um, the tone that you want to reach for in Irish traditional music, um, and, and actually specific, specifically right now I'm talking about, um, what, you know whether or not you want what's called vibrato or just a straight tone, because on the whistle there's only so much you can do to affect the sound of it because it's sort of pre-programmed. By, by the fact that it's a, it's a fipple uh, type mouthpiece 
on a, on a, on a flute, you can adjust the, the sound, the tone of the instrument by changing your embouchure. But on a whistle, it's sort of pre-programmed. So, um, but in terms of vibrato or not, um, I, I say this because a lot of classical players will, will come to me and, and I'll notice they have this sort of built-in vibrato. Now, vibrato, for those that, of you that aren't familiar with the concept, is just this sort of a wavy uh, sound to, to, the, to the note. So, something like this. Now, in Irish traditional music, uh, we want our, our sort of go-to sound to be flat as a board, like this. And then uh, we will add vibrato, um, you know, at, 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 you know to, to suit uh, the tune or uh, sort of like salt to taste, you know. So, so we'll, you know, we'll do something like this. You also notice I'm using what's a technique called finger vibrato, which I'll cover in later lessons. Um, we, we'll, we'll use finger vibrato, we'll use diaph diaphragm or, you know, belly uh, vibrato. Um, but right now, as you're just starting, I want you to play nice, just straight, just a straight tone uh, so that you have that as your foundation. And then as I'm teaching vibrato in later lessons, you can add that uh, wherever you want. And so you don't have this sort of chronic vibrato going all the time. So I think that's it in terms of uh, grip, posture, and tone. Uh, and I'm going to leave you with that, and we'll move on to our next video.